One of the big problems we have with putting these grief vampires out of business is that they're enabled by the media. I'm mostly talking about morning news programs. They put these grief vampires like Thomas John or Matt Frazier or whoever the flavor of the day medium is on the TV set in the morning with some of their some of the hosts that are usually locals favorites. They're people who have identified with these um, news hosts and meteorologists and so on and have built a relationship of trust with them. The people who give you traffic, the people who talk about cooking recipes and, and local news and so on. These are the people that are enabling these psychic mediums. Them and I suppose the TV station, because of course they could say no if they wanted to, but in many cases they're saying yes. It's very sad. I don't know why they're doing this. I don't know if they're paid, but it ends up turning into being an infomercial for the psychic. There's absolutely zero skepticism, never any questioning of, is this person actually communicating with the dead? It's never, ever enters their vocabulary in any such way. The, the one I'm going to show you is an older episode from October of 2022. So it's a year old. I'm recording this in early November of 2023. And this is Detroit Fox 2. The crew is called The Nine. It's a morning crew. Um, Ryan, Mar Marinella, and Deanna. I'm not going to try to say their last names because I will mispronounce them. But they are people that he's he's interviewed or done readings for at least twice more. Their attitude is flippant. They think this is fun. This is entertaining. They don't have a clue that this man in front of them, or at least maybe they do have a clue and they don't care that this man, Thomas John, has hot read his way to the moon and back with people. This man has no psychic ability whatsoever. My cat has more psychic ability. I probably 10 times the psychic ability as Thomas John. <laughs> Yay for cats, <laughs> cat power. This man, Thomas John, has been exposed multiple times for the what he does, hot reading people. Lots and lots of women are trying are lined up trying to get their money back from him. There is a Wikipedia page. I mean, if you just Google his name, you're going to get a Wikipedia page with all this information on it. It's really simple to find it. There was a very powerful uh, New York Times article out on Thomas John in February of 2019. I know because that was my sting, Operation Pizza Roll. So by 2022, we've already done multiple stings, all of them reported, all of them just a quick Google away for this news crew, including Operation Onion Ring, where he's reading little children as young as five. I kid you not for $400 a piece. It's all written up. It's easy to find. But no, this news crew can't seem to figure it out. They'd rather just plug away and have a good hearty laugh. Like there's something entertaining in communicating with the dead and praying, P-R-E-Y, on other people. So let me show you a bit and I'll interrupt here and there. And let's go see how Thomas Don does with his amazing skills of and powers. John, before we move forward, uh, the Paramount Plus show, very successful. Are we going to get another season of that? We're working on that. I hope so. Yeah. I mean, I've been talking to different things about different things. With COVID, everything sort of like ended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is the show where you were yeah, driving we're, people around as correct, an yeah. Uber driver? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, rideshare driver. Yeah. <laughs> they don't pay them. <laughs> we don't want to specify. And unknown to, unbeknownst to them, you, uh, it's Thomas John, and then you start to, to yeah, describe yeah, them. Yeah, they're lives. open to that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> good. All right, good. All right, what happens next? <laughs> We're ready for. So, how about that? This giant, impressive medium is doing some things and, and working on it and some things 
to get his show back in Vegas or his seatbelt psychic or Thomas John experience show back on the air, which were both canceled after one season and his run and Vegas as the um, medium at um, Caesar's palace started in January of 2021 and ended in April of 2021 because of, Oh my gosh, a worldwide panic that destroyed the economies, wrecked jobs, ruined households, just affected the world. What, like what, 10 million people worldwide dead and probably counting at least a million or more in the United States. Nah, he can't predict that. He didn't even mention it. How is it that he didn't know? But grandma is wearing a hat and she likes to work in the garden and there's something about roses. So Thomas John seems to have that all down, but something important like maybe a pandemic in the world that lasted for a couple of years. Nah, that's not important. Let's just have a good laugh. <laughs> so yeah, so Thomas John didn't have a clue about some stuff and things he's trying to do, but COVID made it a little bit difficult. And these ride shares he's doing. Yeah, uh-huh. That was called Seatbelt Psychic. And again, it was canceled after one season and it was uh, not what they're portraying it to be, that he was some ride share driver. People got in the back seat, and then he suddenly, Thomas Johnny gives him readings. Well, he does give him readings, but he's hot red in the head of time. Check out my channel. Look at the playlist for Thomas John. If you don't know what's going on with Seatbelt Psychic or you'd like to know more, Oh my gosh, I could talk for four hours on that and I'm not. So let's go back and let's see if this fun crew of the of the nine morning crew at Detroit Fox 2 has anything interesting. Maybe he's going to talk to their dead. Just be open. I know you guys have done this before with me. Just we always have fun with this. So just be open to anything that you know who the, anybody that you know who's living or past because there can be a message that could come through for you know anybody or about anything or something. Um, the first thing I do want to say is I do feel I don't know who this is for, but I definitely feel a grandmother coming through um, <clears throat> who. I don't feel you had a very strong physical connection with, okay? But I do feel that she's very connected to you in the afterlife. Yeah. But I don't think, I, I feel that either you didn't know her, okay? Or if you did, it would have been very, very little, okay? And um, she's a very, um, I wanna say she's, um, she passed a long time ago. So I'm thinking that it's like maybe when you were a, like a little per, like a little kid. Um, but she, it's interesting because she's very much around you and stuff. Um, I'm gonna describe her. She has dark hair and dark eyes, okay? Um, and um, she's also talking about, I think um, there, um, she's giving me a G name. She's giving me a G name. Um, or J, but I think it's a G name. And I'm gonna tell you though, I don't think, so you have to think about people that you know that passed a long time ago. I, my grandmother's name Your is grandmother? Georgette. Okay. Did oh. she pass a long time ago? Yeah, I did not know her. Okay. She, died, she died before I was born. So I, th oh, I wow. think she is coming through, possibly. Oh, wow. I think it could be her. Uh, do you know she would have had the dark hair and the yes. dark eyes? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, then I want to ask you, I don't, so you don't know a lot about her? No, okay. not much at all. So I just, I, I need to tell you two things. First off, um, if, and you might not know as much because again, you're not, you, if you weren't as close to her, do you know connected to her the name Jenny? And do you know the name uh, connected to her, Renee? These could be living or past people. Yeah, Renee is my aunt, my mom's sister. Okay, so your grandmother is coming through and acknowledging her. Do you know the name Jenny? No. That's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, let's just focus on what you do know. So you, you recognize the name Renee, mm -hmm. but that person's not passed. No. Okay, mm -hmm. for some reason your grandmother shows me something about spending more time or, or I don't know what it is. I don't know if, I don't know. I can't really explain what it is, but it's like something where your grandmother, but I do have to tell you really important, and this may be more important to Renee than to you. Mm -hmm. Your grandmother is telling me that she's been around her a lot lately mm -hmm. and she's kind of guiding her. Um, and I think maybe your aunt has been thinking about her more or been wanting to be feel connected to her. I feel like there's a longing that she misses her. And um, I feel like your grandmother is telling me, like, I don't know if you really talk to her a lot or whatever, but she's just kind of telling me if you can pass along that message, but she's also very connected to you too. Incredible. You, yeah, your grandmother's also watches over you too. Even though you didn't know her, right. she still has a spiritual connection to you. I mm -hmm. think my aunt was 12 when 
my grandmother died. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. So she has some With sort of... Mother. I don't know why it's now, but she's bringing that up and mm. stuff. Yeah. Also, I just want to tell... Um, also, I do have to say this, too. Um, there's something coming through, uh, and I, I really think it's over here. I don't know. Um, and I don't, I'm not even really sure who's bringing this through, but I... I well, actually... Let's talk about this really quick. So that seemed like an awful lot. If he was cold reading, which is a psychic that's coming in cold, they don't have the information, then they're going to do a lot of things with uh, first initial, it seems like this, and it's not very specific and allows the person who's getting the reading, the sitter, to be able to give a lot of information and make the leap. What Thomas John does as a heart reader, he already has that information. He's already done a good look and he's got some key bits memorized. I, I don't know, maybe he's written them on his hand or who knows what, but the information is not that hard to find. Well, I guess if the pressure's on, you're going to be on morning TV and getting, you know, filling up your uh, website with calls right after this reading that he's doing online the pressure's on to remember uh, a few key details. So what we did found find, one of my team members went over to the social media pages for these hosts. And the first reading, this one we're talking about is Ryan. And so it's a grandmother coming through. It's very connected to her, but you didn't know her very well because you were either very little, name starts with a J or a G. She had dark hair, dark eyes. And then he says, yes, that must be my grandmother. She died before I was born. And then he starts talking about names, Janine, 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 Renee. And then Renee has not died. Um, so then he, Ryan says, well, Renee is my aunt, my mom's sister, and she's still alive. And so then it goes into this platitudes kind of thing that's kind of obvious where somebody just says yes she's around your mom right now and she's floating around giving her advice and telling her other reminders or something where to find her keys i don't know it's just they're just making it up okay so that he's protecting her which is a bunch of bs somebody's around you is protecting you right uh-huh okay well tell that to the to the ambulance companies so he's giving her this information, giving Thomas John this information. So let's take a quick look. So what we found, or I should say what one of my team members found, is that Ryan's Facebook page, you can quickly tell that his mother's name is Rhoda. Now, apparently Rhoda is on famousinfo.com and it has her first name, which is Rhoda Gavernick. I don't know these people, but that's what we found. And from there, there are several ways to know that Rhoda has a sister named Renee. And her last name is D apostrophe A-L-L-E-V-A. So Rhoda's Facebook page is really private. It's locked down. Now, that's not a problem for somebody who's hot reading. It just makes it a little bit more difficult because now what you got to do is even though a Facebook page is private, there are still posts that can be found on the page, um, usually birthdays or, you know, happy birthday to somebody or just little kind of things that wouldn't seem really that important, very insignificant posts you can usually see. But what happens is somebody else will post there. And what they'll do is you can see um, by clicking on their name, which is really simple because it's right there. You click on their name and you go into somebody else's Facebook page, which is not private. And that's what my um, team member was able to do. They couldn't really get into Rhoda's page. So they saw that um, Renee was mentioned and Renee had posted on, on Rhoda's page and a quick click away, we're on Renee's page. And once you're on Renee's page, I mean, Rhoda and Renee are sisters, so you know, anything about their parents that Renee's going to put up is all going to be pertinent to Rhoda and thusly to Ryan. So we went into the Facebook page and we were able to find all sorts of information. We were uh, at least once a year, Renee posts a photo of her mom, an old photo. Anybody who's following this channel, you know that phot photographies and old photos are my thing. And we use old photos 
uh, if we're trying to get information like a hot read for, for evaluation reasons, we find that fast because when you're looking at the photo sections on a Facebook page, older pictures, things that are sepia or black and white or something that looks like from the 60s or the 70s, they stand out from the normal snapshots we take. You can scroll through them rather quickly and you can see that image. When usually those images are put up as a reminder for Veterans Day, Mother's Day, birthdays, anniversaries of death, or or you know maybe a graduation, but usually some celebration, some way of remembering somebody. A Veterans Day photo, they put up a picture of their family member in a in a uniform or uh, a wedding picture, even if it was fifty years ago, and so on. It's fast and easy, and then usually other relatives are going to post on that page. And you have even more stories. It's that simple and it's instant. So Renee, she posts this picture. And as you look at this photo, let me show you it. Here's a screenshot. Um, as you look at it, you can see that she has a brunette. She's obviously a brunette and with dark hair, dark eyes. And um, it's an old picture. And you can see in here, there's... Uh, uh, Georgette and Renee are mentioned. Here's Renee's uh, post right there. And you can see also this is 2021. The video we're watching is from 2022. Uh, my team member says that uh, if we were to scroll back to March 13th of 2016, we would find a post that her that the mom had died when um, there was a little girl. You know, it's, it's mentioned that the people that... Uh, Ryan wouldn't have known this woman and so on. They also mention uh, heavily, he happy heavenly birthday, Georgette, which you can see here. And um, they all also will post family pictures during Easter. And you can see that Ryan is mentioned, which is her son and nephew and somebody the name of Tommy who's related to Renee. In other words, it's all there. All Thomas John has to do is he doesn't even have to get it exact. He can just say, who's Georgette? Who's, who is uh, Tommy, who is, um, or a name like George, da, 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 you know, and Renee, and you just throw these things out here. He doesn't have to come up with a whole story. Ryan's going to pull up that story and he's going to tell stories if he knows them. So it's not so um, difficult as you would think to be able to get that kind of information off a Facebook page. Tom's John doesn't have to uh, memorize huge sets of family trees or long lines of information. He just has to know a few names and possibly some relationships. And that's how you were able to do it. So that's why that is so easy. Let's continue with the, um, with the rest of the reading. And let's see, I think there's one more. Uh, and I, I really think it's over here. I don't know. Um, and I don't, I'm not even really sure who's bringing this through, but I, I well, actually it is a grandfather. So I think it's for one of you. Um, uh, but there's a grandfather that's coming through. I feel that like this would be on your father's side. I do feel that you would have been very close to him. I feel like you would have had a, a, a connection with him. It's different than this. You would have actually known him in life, okay? Um, and I feel with him also um, that he's, uh, it's definitely your dad's father though, okay? It's your dad's father. And um, I want to say he passed maybe in the last five, 10 years. Maybe I want to go more to 10. Um, and I feel you being very close to him. And he's talking about something about, um, I don't know if somebody's moving or what's coming up about moving, but he keeps talking about moving. And he also is telling me, you must have a dog because he's telling me, this man is telling me um, that he actually visits a lot with your dog mm -hmm. and there'll be weird things that happen with your dog and I think it's actually your grandfather um, uh, uh, kind of like visiting is what I'm feeling. Um, but I don't know which one of this is for with you. I, I, I think it's it, it sounded could be like for me. you, yeah. Could it be could me. be for you. Well, your grandfather's telling me that he's always around you and actually that you're very intuitive and you'll have, you, you have feelings about him. A dog does something weird and that must be grandpa. No, dogs don't do anything weird. Oh my gosh, come on now. They never bark at things that you can't see. I mean, they, they're they they're never weird. What a thing to say. How could it possibly be wrong? Well, maybe if she doesn't have a dog or she'd have nothing to do with the dog, maybe that would be evidence that it wasn't real. 
Well, let's let's take a quick look and see. Look, a picture of a dog. What's the likelihood she has a grandfather who's who's passed away? I mean, she's got two grandfathers. It's pretty likely one of them's passed away. Somebody's moving, whatever that means. That doesn't mean much of anything. Somebody's moving. That's not much evidence. Somebody could be moving. It could have been her. It could have been the cameraman on the side. It could have been the producer who's sitting somewhere else. It, it's not really much of anything. But the thing he's going to do next, which is really damaging as far as I'm concerned, and that's going to be some miscellaneous information that he found out. Now, pay attention because... This is beyond what um, it, it's beyond what um, they just getting a reading to somebody who's sitting on the crew who's voluntarily says, yeah, I'll take a reading. No, it's different. Let me show you what happens. Uh, feelings about him. Yeah. Yeah. And can I just say the weirdest thing? Tell me. When I walked in this building today, there was somebody that um, died a long time ago that used to work here. And she greeted me at the front door. Oh, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who she is. Her name's Kathy. Mm. Oh, but she said she used to, she used to work here or something. Wow. Yes, yeah, so I, I don't know who she is, but she said she used to work here or work with people here or something. Oh. Um, but she died a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, there was. Yeah. Um, I, I, I may know who you're referring to. I can't think of her name, but. Mm -hmm. um, okay, is it yeah. either Kathy or Kathleen? Mm -hmm. But it was like she came right when I came here. It was wow. weird. Yeah. Incredible. Now let's go back to Kathy because this really is embarrassing. Um, I think it's extremely embarrassing. This family um, of Kathy didn't ask to come in and get a reading. They didn't volunteer. It's pretty embarrassing. They're on live TV. And this person who worked there named Kathy, they don't seem to quite know who she is. And they're like, well, I think I know who you're talking about. Really, it's a, it really is kind of like saying, well, I guess she wasn't that important to our community and she wasn't that, you know, we don't really know. Did we, I don't even know if we had a party for her or, or did a collection for her or anything. You know what I mean? The woman couldn't even remember her last name. So let me tell you who Kathy is because um, my team member just put, um, typed in the words um, Fox Detroit and um, I think a couple keywords like death or something like that. And he was able to pull up an article. I'm not going to share it here right now, but you could do the same thing and see how easy it is to find up. He found an article very quickly that was a woman named Kathy Walsh who died in April of 2022, which is only a few months before this was recorded in October of 2022. These people have already forgotten her. Now, what the confusion is, is that she, Thomas John is saying she died a long time ago. She didn't die a long time ago. She used to work there a long time ago, but she recently died. And she was a journalist that worked on this on this program. So maybe these people are all new and didn't really know her. But that's what I'm talking about is Thomas John is able to just pull up. You just do a few Google searches you don't have to look for a death of somebody who happened in the building, but you can do some Googling around and just put in some keywords, you know, the night before and, and come up with maybe a story. You might get lucky. So somebody on the staff that used to work there died very recently. So it's a very compelling story where he can say, I walked into the building and immediately somebody named Kathy uh, approached me and she was dead and she died a long time ago and she used to work here. Right. So all of that information easily could have been received from a Google search and not from communication with the dead. And that's what it comes down to. How much of this is fun and games and how much of this is getting into serious manipulation of people's emotions? Not only is it embarrassing that this staff here on this stage does not know the name, the last name of a coworker who died just six months before. That's That's got to be embarrassing for any of her family members who are watching. That feels wrong. Even if they use the excuse that, oh, I was kind of confused because Kathy died recently, not a long time ago. 
you know, that's that's the excuse people can make whenever they're trying to to play this off. But to be honest with you, it's cruel and it's unnecessary and so on. And this isn't fun. It's not fun in games. There's a little bit more to the video. I'm not going to show you right now. I'm going to be writing an article about this for Skeptical Inquirer with all the details and all the links. You're uh, you're welcome to look this up on skepticalinquiry.org. Look for Susan Gerbic and you'll, you should be able to find it. But the point is, this is not fun and games. It is not humorous. But yet, these TV morning shows still tend to say that they're all fun and games. Let me tell you two more things really quick about Thomas John that I'm just going to put in here. They, they're not going to be their own separate uh, Facebook, um, YouTube videos or anything like that. I'm just going to just mention them really quick. There are a couple Facebook groups out there that are following Thomas John um, because they are wanting money back. Either he's not giving them their readings that he's promised and constantly cancels or they have found out that he is hot reading them and he's he's not communicating with the dead they're trying to get their money back there have been two people that have posted in these facebook groups that are supportive of thomas john uh one of them one of them says uh that um thomas she had a reading with thomas john and she was recording the reading Keep in mind, you guys, I'd love to have all these readings. I will take care of it. I will do a video on it. I don't have to reveal who you are. But if you have audio or if you have video, please send it to me, Susan Gerbic at gmail.com or approach me on Facebook. And this woman said she turned off the recording. She So she's listened to, she had a reading with him, turned off the recording. And then Thomas John said that he sees that she's knees up her she's up to her knees and pennies and they laughed and that was the end of it well not nine days later nine days so a little over a week later she won fifty two thousand five hundred dollars playing penny slots so she believes that thomas john was talking about pennies in the slot she was going to be winning and not that he was probably just making a comment about pennies Coins are really common for in mediumship. They say, I see coins, you know, the year on the coin is supposed to reflect something that happened in the life of somebody you're missing. It could mean anything. The day they were born, the day they died, the day they had surgery, the day they moved, the day they've had their first kiss, the day that they had, um, were first told that they were, they were going to be a parent or a grandparent or a graduation. I mean, it could be anything. There's a year on the penny or whatever coin. And people associate it with whatever they want it to associate. It's a very common trope. So Thomas John mentioned the word pennies because you know you can find pennies all over the place. And this woman won penny slots later, and she is associating the two together. And she is saying he predicted that. Now, I'm not thinking that's all that great. She just he would have said you're going to be winning a lot of money in penny slots pretty soon. Well, anyway, so I asked her about that and she and I said, you know, it's pretty odd that he said this to you after you stopped recording. And she she said, have a wonderfully blessed day. And then she left and we've never heard from her again because she didn't like being confronted with it because she thinks it's such a really great hit. Another woman came and she said that she um, had an amazing reading with a taxi driver named Sam who is in prison who wrote letters, she wrote letters to some guy in prison. And Thomas John said that that the name started with an L. And, and Thomas John said, you know, I'm getting an L name. Does that mean anything to you? So what I said to her, no, he says, you're um, something about a name with an L. And I said to her, did Thomas John say, your name starts with an L? Or does he say, I'm getting an L name. Does that mean anything to you? And she deleted all her posts and left the Facebook group and didn't say another word, which is telling to me that he actually said, I'm getting an L name. Does that mean anything to you? And she heard your name starts with an L, which I guess it did. So 
it's very frustrating because people don't want to listen to these um to anything that contradicts the information that they want to believe so bad so they they don't want to hear this this is like la 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 more else Anyway, I hope you've liked this video. I haven't done a video in a few weeks because I've been out of town attending a conference in Las Vegas, Nevada called PsyCon. And it is a blast, but it is exhausting. So I'm starting back up with my videos before I go out of town again. I hope you enjoy these. If you do, please like, please share. This is an old video, October 2022, the one I just shared with you from Fox. I'm recording this in 2023, 20, but before I clear it out of my, my queue, which I have a lot of these videos and research already done, but sometimes it gets skipped over and um, I haven't put them out. So this one's kind of a, a year old, but I think it's still relevant. I don't think this kind of stuff is funny. These morning TV shows want to keep it light. They don't want to talk about serious issues. They want to um, make it fun and frivolous and entertaining. But, you know, I don't think it's funny. I'm not laughing. I think it's manipulative. And I think, shame on you. When I write to these people and say, hey, what do you think? Is this really, I mean, now that you've had some time to think about it, do you think this is really communication with the dead? Or do you just look at your Facebook or Instagram post? I never hear from them. They never respond. Go figure.